Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. Thank you for joining me again. Wanted to say a special thank you to everyone who has taken the time to subscribe to the channels. Just rolled over 250 subscribers. Really appreciate it. Thank you all for joining me on this journey to financial freedom. Hopefully you have started your own portfolio and are on your way to financial freedom as well. Today we are going to take a look at Cardinal Health. It is September 12th, Monday. So let's jump right into the video. And if you haven't done so already and you like this kind of content, dividend stocks, dividend growth stocks, dividend portfolio updates, that's what we cover here. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. If you find any value in the video, hit that like button, share with anyone you think might find value, drop a comment, let me know what you think. And again, we are going to be taking a look at Cardinal Health. Headquartered in Dublin, Ohio, Cardinal Health Inc., ticker CH8, CAH, is a distributor of pharmaceuticals, a global manufacturer and distributor of medical and laboratory products, and a provider of performance and data solutions for healthcare facilities. If you want to know more about them, check them out at www.cardinalhealth.com. This is their homepage where I pulled this from, but they are basically a provider of healthcare products to hospitals, to clinics, that sort of thing, doctors, nurses, if they have a family practice, something like that. So they would be the provider of the, the equipment that they use. Now, the reason we're taking a look at them, they were down 1.23% on the day. So they closed out the day at $69.03. Looks like they're flat in the after hours, actually at 4.21 p.m. whenever I'm recording this video. So that's one to watch. After hours are from 4 to 8 for anyone who doesn't know. And we are talking about Cardinal Health, Inc., ticker CH. C-A-H, and they are in the healthcare sector. We're gonna go through all the lines here, guys. The previous close is basically what it closed at. Because it's Monday, this would have been the close Friday. So they closed last Friday at $69.89. They opened this morning at $69.88. You'll see a little difference here. That's because there is a pre-market before the market opens, just like there is an after hours market. After the And if you want to be involved in the pre-market and the after hours market, and if your brokers doesn't allow you, Weeble allows you to do that. You can buy and sell in the pre-market or after hours market on Weeble. I do have a Weeble link down below. If you want to use that, you'll get some free stocks. I'll get some free stocks. You don't have to use that. You can sign up yourself on your own uh, if you want. So again, if, if but if you wanted to help out the channel, using the link down below is one way to do it. I don't really worry about the bid and ask, but the day's range, that's the, the low and the high for the day. It was as low as 68.83. It got as high as $70.13. You can clearly see the volatility over the course of the day. 52-week range, that's where it was over the last year, as low as $45.85, as low as 72.28. I actually was looking at this last year at around 45 to 47 dollars i did not pull the trigger i thought it was too slow a growth and there are concerns uh, with me for this company we'll cover those here in a moment this is the volume so these are basically how many shares of the uh, stock are traded on the daily uh, so average volume is 22,605,761 today's volume was a little lower than that 2,268,505 a market cap of 18.812 billion, a beta of 0.87. So it is a little less volatile than the overall market. That's what this means. Beta means that it's the volatility of the stock. A one is the market. Anything above one is more volatile than the market. Anything below one is less volatile than the market. PE ratio, it doesn't show one here, which is odd. It should. And this is another one that I don't typically cover because it really changes and is based on the sector that you're in. But the EPS is earnings per share. And this basically tells you if you if you owned a share of CAH, Cardinal Health, or any stock for that matter in this sector or in section, it will tell you how much the company is generating per share uh, that you own, or profit basically. And this being in the negative is a concern, right? So that basically means if you own a share of Cardinal Health, you are negative $3.38 in earnings, right? So it's earning $3.38 less than the share cost. So that is not a good thing. We want to be in the positive. And again, if you want to look at this as a, a metric that you use, I don't really look at it too much. I look more at the financials and go and look at their cash, uh, their free cash flow, their debt to equity, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So I get into their financials and the statistics and look more on that. I'll go into the statistics and look at their five-year average for their PE, uh, their five-year average for their dividend. If they pay a dividend, I focus on dividend growth stocks. You may not, 
but that's where I look at. So if you look in the statistics, one way to show if a company is undervalued or overvalued, you could look at its five year uh, payout. So it's 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 five year dividend. Let's say it's 3.6 is its five year and it's currently paying at 4.2. Well, that would tell you that it's undervalued. And if it's paying below its five year average, that would tell you it's low, below value. Earnings date would tell you where your earnings would be, but again, I don't really focus on this. And then this is another one I look at. We cover every week or every day whenever we do these. Forward dividend is $1.98 divided by four because this does pay out quarterly with a yield of 2.8%. So it is yielding over the overall market, which is nice. But again, this negative EPS is really concerning and not having a PE ratio is really concerning as well. That tells me it may be negative, which they don't show typically a negative PE. X dividend date is September 30th. So if you bought the day before, X dividend date means when it goes, not the last day you can buy it to get the dividend, but the last day uh, uh, it will show of record who owns the stock. So you would need to actually buy it on the 29th to guarantee you would get the dividend, not on the X dividend date. A lot of guys, a lot of people, guys and gals, get this confused that if they buy it on the X dividend date, they'll get the dividend. That's not necessarily the case. Always buy it the day before or even a couple days before the X dividend date, because if you buy it on the X dividend date, you will not necessarily show up, depending on your brokerage, would not show up as the owner of the stock of record. And that's what they're looking at. On this day, whoever owns the stock, that's who gets the shares. And according to Yahoo Finance, where I pulled this information, they have a one-year target estimate of $69.54. So not very much higher than where it sits. And I would even say that's probably a little high for this company. I'm not affiliated with Yahoo Finance, just where I like to pull some information. And according to stockanalysis.com, where I like to pull some information as well, and the 20 stock analysts they have had to take a look at it, they call it a consensus hold. I would actually say if it's in your portfolio, it is definitely a hold, maybe even be a sell, in my opinion, with a negative EPS. But again, that's uh, do, do more research on it if it is something that you own or you're interested in. They have a range, a low of $56.56, .56, which would be a 18.06% decline from where it currently sits. And if you are interested in this, I would definitely look to watch it pull back further and maybe go closer to that $45, even at 56. To me, this is a little high, but that's just my opinion. Average uh, estimate of $70.93, which would be a 2.75% increase from where it currently sits and a high of $84. If it happened to reset, that would be a 21.69% increase uh, according to stockanalysis.com. Again, not one, not one in my portfolio. I have zero shares. I, again, I looked at this last year and I thought it was just a little too uh, undervalued or too overvalued, even at $45 based on the growth and where it was sitting. So it's not one in my portfolio. It's not even one on my ad. I just looked at it today because it had pulled back and there is a lot of green in the market today. So a lot of companies uh, have started to rebound a little bit from the last few weeks pullbacks. So that's Cardinal Health. That's where we're at with it. Not one in my portfolio, but if you're interested, definitely do more research and understand the business, understand the growth or lack thereof in this case. With that said, always appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up, ring the notification bell, subscribe to the channel and drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of Cardinal Health. Is it in your portfolio? Is it one you're watching? I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, suggestions for future t topics, opinions, or constructive criticism. Drop it all down below. And this is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, we'll see you in the next one. And thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a great week. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm going to share my opinion and investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk and money. You should never invest any amount. You're not comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select criteria. Or seek the advice counsel of a certified financial advisor.